The T is size. T1 tumor is a breast cancer that is anywhere from uh, 1 to 2 centimeters. It's under 2 centimeters. That's a T. That's how I uh, deduce the T. T2 is uh, greater than 2 centimeters up to 5 centimeters. That's T2. T3 is anything greater than 5 centimeters. And a T4 is a tumor that is in the skin of the breast or it's invaded into the chest wall, the rib cage, if you will. So that's T4. The N is the nodal status. I look at the lymph nodes that the surgeon takes out. Uh, N1 is one to three lymph nodes that are positive. N2 is uh, four to five, I'm sorry, four, yep, four to five lymph nodes, and N3 is anything greater than that. And that's how I get the N. N1 micro is a small lymph node, a lymph node that has a small deposit of less than 200 cells. So I'm looking at the lymph nodes. I'm looking at the how. I, I have the whole specimen. I'm measuring the gross tumor. I can tell the dimensions. I look at all the lymph nodes. And then the metast MO is metastatic. M0 is basically, we don't have metastatic or signs of metastatic disease. M1 is, is metastatic. It's in the liver, lung, brains. Understand, though, again, this is a pathologic stage. I'm giving a stage based on an x-ray. I'm not, I'm not staging this by circulating tumor cells yet. So I'm just saying that I think this is M0. The patients had a workup. Maybe they had a CAT scan. Maybe they had a, a PET scan. Everything's negative. So I'm going to call it an M0 because I don't have obvious signs in our current day technology to say that it's metastatic. But you can have circulating tumor cells in a stage 1 or stage 2 tumor. Okay, you, they can be circulating, and they can be soon to form an M1, but I don't know that yet. Yeah. When they're doing the nodal involvement, mm -hmm. are they doing that while the patient is being worked on? They do. So they, they, they do. continue to to survey. That is correct. Until they get a negative. Uh, actually, what they'll do is the surgeon. That's a good question. So if a, if a woman has breast cancer and she uh, is undergoing a lumpectomy partial removal of the breast, or a mastectomy, the full removal of the breast. During the operation, while the patient's asleep, they send me the lymph nodes. We call them sentinel lymph nodes, because they're the first lymph nodes that they would drain to, okay? And they send them to me fresh, right in the lab. I cut them, I freeze them, I cut them, and I look at it, look at it for tumor right there on the spot. I can do this in 10, 15 minutes, patient's still under, I call the surgeon back and I say negative. If they're negative, he's done. If it's positive, he removes all the lymph nodes because then we have to we have to stage it. Is it greater than five? Is it greater than nine? But if the two to three sentinel lymph nodes are negative, we're going to assume that the rest of them are negative and the scans are negative. So we're going to stage this patient, you know, whatever stage one, stage two. This is what my report looks like. My my report will be breast, right or left, excisional biopsy. In, so excisional biopsy, a needle biopsy is a small needle, and excision is where they do a lumpectomy or a partial mastectomy, and a mastectomy is the full breast. So I use the example here of a lumpectomy or an excision. So my diagnosis is invasive ductal carcinoma. I say it's invasive. I tell them what type. I grade it. I measure it, 1.8 centimeters. I say the lymph nodes were negative. Zero for three lymph nodes is what I looked at. And I have to comment on the margin. Because if a margin is positive, in other words, if the tumor goes to where the surgeon cut out, and we're talking about a lumpectomy, not a mastectomy, but an excisional um, uh, where they take just a portion out, if that margin is positive, the surgeon has to go back in and take more out. You can't leave tumor in or, or you, know, you think there's tumor. So I look at the margin of the whole specimen. I ink it. I look at, you know, the next day I look at multiple sections. I say whether or not it's positive or negative. If it's negative, I have to tell them how close it is because then they can give radiation to the patient in the proximity of where that closest margin is. Uh, and then I give the stage. So this is a T1, N0, M0 pathologic stage 1A. Again, I say pathologic stage because maybe or maybe not the patient's had a CAT scan, PET scan, MRI. I don't know. But I'm, I'm going to assume it's M0 or sometimes I even say MX. I don't know uh, unless they've had scans. But again, this is a pathologic stage. This patient may very well have circulating tumor cells, but that, that we are not currently checking. 
actively, and that's the status that will help us in this report and the treatment. So let's get to circulating tumor cells. That was your 15, 20 minutes on breast pathology and cancer in the breast. So now we go to IV diagnostics. This is the part where we're looking at developing circulating tumor cells. To find those tumor cells that are not quite developed into a metastatic site, but we can catch them early on and treat these patients earlier. We need to change this, guys. Not so much rare, all tumors. The global challenge. 13 million new cancer patients are diagnosed a year. 7.5 million projected deaths a year from cancer. One in three people will contact some sort of cancer during their lifetime. And unfortunately, in today's society, the way we treat cancer now, the majority of these are metastatic by the time we diagnose it. Again, women who get their pap smears, women who get their mammograms, you're doing yourself a justice because you're trying to catch it before it becomes cancer or at a very early stage. But you'd be amazed, even in Porter County, how many patients I see that have skipped their mammogram for the last five years and all of a sudden they have this four centimeter breast cancer that has spread to lymph nodes and elsewhere. It costs us a lot, the federal government and all of us health care providers, a lot of money, taxpayer money in treating all of this. We don't really have any good way other than the chemotherapies and radiation that we give. And if we can just have better effective monitoring, I think we would do a better job. This is just showing you a breakdown. I see a lot of colorectal. I see a lot of prostate cancer, a lot of lung cancer. Unfortunately, again, they're diagnosed too late. It's the patient with the cough that blows it off, doesn't get a chest x-ray for years and years, smoked, maybe quit smoking because of the cough, but smoked for years and years. Now they get a chest x-ray and by that time it's already a large lung mass and it has spread. So a lot of these patients get diagnosed once it's metastatic, which is unfortunate. So this is what we want to do. We want to move with circulating tumor cells. We want to move to more personalized medicine. We want to take these circulating tumor cells and we want to understand the molecular aspects of them. We want to determine what type of genetic aspects and makeup are of the tumor cells because that will help us really determine how aggressive they're going to be. We want to monitor circulating tumor cells from the time the patient is diagnosed. We want a baseline and then follow them every three to six months to see when they develop circulating tumor cells because that's going to help us in our treatment modality. And I'm going to go over the in vivo nanotechnology that we're developing. I like this. That's basically what we're doing with circulating tumor cells. We're trying to tag these cells, learn everything about them, and then treat specific modalities by treating the specific tumor cells in these tumors. And this is what we're talking about. This is, I think, a great picture because you have the primary tumor here, the cell, the malignant cell breaking off again. What molecular aspect? Why is it developed into a metastatic cell, a tumor cell that is now circulating? Here's your circulating tumor cell. If we can tag this, identify it, extract it, isolate it, which we have done, we can now determine the molecular weight makeup, what chemotherapy is going to work best, and better yet, we can catch it while it's still circulating before it forms a metastatic site. Because once it forms this, then it's up to radiology to pick it up maybe three, six months later. So if we can find the circulating tumor cells early. This is what we do now. We have chest x-rays, we have CAT scans, we have PET scans. We do bronchoscopies where we put scopes down your throat, up your rectum. We look...